basal cell carcinoma. What is it? Welcome back to Get Connected. I'm your host, Con Jackson. We're about to talk to Suzanne that has an advanced case of the basal cell carcinoma, as well as Dr. Freelander. They join us now for our Health Beat segment. Welcome. It's great to be with you, Con. Well, Suzanne and Dr. Freelander, it's great to have you with us. It's great, great to, to be, be here. here. Great job answering in unison. And Suzanne, let's start with you. What led you to go see the doctors that ultimately led to your diagnosis? Uh, well, I had, I had gotten very anemic, and I went to the doctor, and uh, he said, go right to the hospital, and they checked me out, and uh, they did a biopsy and found out I had this uh, basal cell carcinoma. And uh, at that time, uh, I didn't know what to do with it, but um, we did some research, and because mine was quite sp spread out, we f I found out about Aravage, which is, has been developed by Genentech, and I found Dr. Friedlander at Mount Sinai and went, went right into a program there and have been taking it now for two months. And it's, a, it's just a wonderful, wonderful drug because it's one capsule a day and it doesn't change your lifestyle at all. Now, Suzanne, you mentioned that you were anemic, but when did you first know that that was the case? I, I was feeling weak and, and things like that. Uh, I, I don't think uh, that the anemia was, you know, why I had the basal cell carcinoma. It's just the, that that was just one of the side effects from it. Well, Suzanne, it sounds very scary. And Dr. Freelander, what is it, medically speaking, basal cell carcinoma? So it, it's a type of skin cancer. It's uh, actually one of the most common types of cancers. Over a million cases diagnosed a year in the United States. And usually it's treated with localized therapy and treated curatively. But on rare occasions, it could grow in the area where it's formed and cause a lot of destruction of the tissue in that area. And that's called locally advanced basal cell carcinoma. On rarer occasions, uh, the cancer could spread inside the body, what's called metastatic basal cell carcinoma. Dr. Freelander, when the skin cancer transforms itself into metastatic basal cell carcinoma, what is the body failing to do? Uh, it, it's not uh, controlling, it, it's not preventing tumor from, from forming, and we need to learn a lot more about that, but we have uh, uh, tumor uh, uh, either growing in the area where it started or, or inside the body, and in part because of, uh, in large part, because of changes in the tumor cells that have selected for the basal cell carcinomas to grow and divide and proliferate. And Dr. Freelander, I want to turn your attention to what Suzanne mentioned earlier, that she had several symptoms that she was aware of that led to her diagnosis of skin cancer. What kind of symptoms should we be aware of that should allow us to go see a doctor? Now, presentation varies. Again, the majority are found uh, as uh, localized and, and treated uh, with a localized therapy such as surgery. However, as the lesion in locally advanced basal cell carcinomas grow, they could cause destruction and, uh, in terms of eating away at tissue and muscle and bone and cause a lot of discomfort and deformity. In certain cases, uh, as here, one could have, uh, over a long period of time, gradual bleeding uh, that could ultimately lead to anemia. But that's one way it could present, but that's a, a, not a, 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 I wouldn't list that as one of the common ways for it to present. Well, doctor, it clearly sounds we need to become more vigilant when it comes to our body and our skin. We. Uh, uh, need to be vigilant, look for any changing skin lesions, and then uh, if have a low threshold to show them to a, 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 derma, a dermatologist or to your physician. Uh, you know, because we do now have better and targeted therapies, and we don't want things to get to the locally advanced metastatic state, but if they do, we now have new novel treatments. For the first time, we have an FDA-approved treatment, Erevej, developed by Genentech, whom we're here on behalf, that's a targeted therapy that blocks a specific abnormality in the basal cell carcinomas and could shut that a pathway off that, we, that normally would lead to proliferation, and we're seeing high response rates. So for now, people with locally advanced and metastatic basal cell carcinomas refractory to surgery and radiation therapy, we now for the first time have a FDA-approved treatment that's active in terms of shrinkage and is actually not a nonspecific therapy, but it's actually a very targeted therapy to a selected for abnormality in the majority of basal cell carcinomas. Well, it's wonderful to hear about the advancements happening in particular about the approval of the FDA medication you mentioned, but what is the call to action today, doctor? 
Uh, the most important thing is prevention. Minimize sun exposure, sun protective measures, sunblock uh, year round. Check your skin once a month. It's a nice safe interval. You're not looking too closely where you might miss changes and you're not waiting too long. Have someone look at your scalp and your back areas you don't see readily. Any changing skin lesion, anything concerning, show it to your doctor. Have a low threshold to do that. It's better to be safe uh, than sorry. And again, the vast majority of basal cell carcinomas will be caught at a point where they could be treated with a localized therapy and curatively. But now for that small, rarer subgroup of people where it becomes locally advanced or metastasized, we now have a, a very rational, targeted, targeted and effective uh, FDA-approved treatment. Excellent advice, doctor, and it's clear I need to be following these preventative measures closer. But Suzanne, let's turn our attention to you. I know you've been on this medication for two months. How are you feeling? I really feel very good. I haven't had to change my lifestyle at all. Um, I take the capsule once a day, and uh, I lead my normal life, and I continue doing my travel business. Um, and. Uh, Hope, I know the sh uh, tumor is shrinking and it'll just take a while till uh, hopefully it is all gone. Well, Suzanne, I'm glad you're doing so much better. Tell us about this next vacation spot you're going to be visiting. <laughs> I don't know. I think I'd like to go back to uh, California. I love Cali Northern California. Well, Suzanne, have a great trip. And more importantly, thank you both for being so passionate about this subject and helping others that are facing skin cancer. Rick, thank you. Thank you. If you want to learn more about other Health Beat segments we've recently done, please check out our Get Connected website at contv.com. Well, the big movie coming out in the theaters, and you probably can see the sign behind us, is The Lorax. And we'll be sitting down to find out why Taylor Swift says it's her favorite project yet. I think my fans and, and anybody will love The Lorax because it's just got this magical essence to it.